Okay, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 32. So we're going to preach from Jeremiah 32. Uh, let's start at verse 30. Jeremiah 32, verse 30. Uh, I'm, you know, to save time, I'm just going to move into what the prophet was saying. For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, saith the Lord. Verse 31. For this city hath been to me as a provocation of my anger and of my fury from the day that they built it even unto this day that I should remove it from before my face. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, their, and their prophets, and the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they have turned unto me the back and not the face. Though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. Wow. When I read that uh, several days ago, uh, it struck me that the people had provoked God to anger. And uh, as I'm thinking about that, well, on the other side of the coin, if people can provoke God to anger, they can provoke Him to pleasure. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, the word provoke is more like to stir up to, to the point of irritation, but I'm using the word provoke loosely. You could provoke him to pleasure, to have more and more pleasure over you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, where it says, uh, uh, verse 31, they provoke God so much, and at the end of 30, verse 31, he says, that I should remove it from before my face. They provoked him so badly, it's like, I want to get you out of my face. And, but then on the opposite, if that's true, then the opposite, if you could provoke God to pleasure, he, uh, stir up his pleasure over you, he'll want you more and more. He'll come looking for you. Whoa! Shut up. Look in the Garden of Eden. Every evening, the cooler of the evening. Where's Adam? Where's Eve? Before they sinned. He took pleasure. He wanted to, them to be with him. So, Lord been sh uh, showed me, was t speaking to me about um, uh, being more proactive in our relationship with God. Hallelujah. You see, verse, uh, here's another thing. Verse 33, And they have turned unto me their back. They turned their back to me and not their face, though I taught them rising up early and teaching them. Now that phrase, I taught them rising up early, you know, to speak to them, it's, a, it's a, what they call jargon. And basically in the Hebrew it means I, I diligently sought to teach them. So it just means, you know, uh, speaking to them, rising up early. And then I gave so much effort. I was just pouring out my heart to teach them this. And yet they refused to receive my instruction. And so God is uh, always trying to teach us. And not just teach us. He, he's pouring out his heart. Listen to me. Listen to me. My people, learn this. Learn this. Learn this. And you, you know, Kuro Koshaka, uh, I think, uh, I know for myself, sometimes it's hard to understand this. Basically, because we're, in our nature, hard-headed. <laughs> There's no way, other way to put it. God be trying to teach us and we take it lightly, we obey it just on the surface and to let it go and forget all this. But this is the thing God is just pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. Uh, uh, as I can be provoked to anger, I can be provoked to pleasure. And Jesus said in John 8, 29, John 8, 29, I do always those things that please Him. Yes. Always. Now, 
this is a very subtle point to get. I am not preaching we, uh, we should do works to earn God's love. No, I mean, Jesus said, I do always those things that please God. He didn't have to earn God's love. But what we're saying is, because we're in a deep relationship of love and intimacy with the Lord, we want to do more things to please Him, to make Him happy. We're not doing it to earn love. We're already love, but we just like to see Daddy smile more and more. Ho, ho, hallelujah. It gives us pleasure to see Daddy happier and happier with us. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we're not preaching you got to do work, work, work to earn God's love. No. Okay, so... Hallelujah. So it's to uh, uh, realize if God can be provoked to anger, He can be provoked to pleasure, to be more and more pleased with us. And so what then? Let's do it. Let's be more conscious of this. Look at David. God said, David is a man after my own heart. Wow. How could David get to that point? Or what did he do? Well, he says, uh, Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord uh, 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 with all my might. I'll just bless him uh, uh, forever. I'll just, uh, his praise, uh, his lips shall be constantly, uh, his praise shall be constantly on my lips. Amen. Just constantly. Day, all day long, I will praise him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise so Lord. all day long, David was stirring God up Amen. to be pleased with him. Amen. Stirring up God's pleasure. And so here's the thing I'm, I'm beginning to see. It, God wants his, to, his people realize, you can stir me up to pleasure. Amen. It's in your hands. Amen. It's in your hands to do that. But what is the common way of thinking among saints? It's like, well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on the Lord. You know, uh, I prayed for something. I'm in a waiting mode now. <laughs> well, you know, that word waiting can be so abused. You know, for some people waiting is, well, I'm waiting on the Lord in front of the TV <laughs> with my chicken, you know, and my French fries and my Coke, and I'm waiting. But uh, for some others, uh, I'm waiting on the Lord on my knees. Shaka <laughs> I'm waiting on the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on him in praise. I'm waiting on him in meditation. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on him soaking in his presence. Haya, haya. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, recently, I was in a, a conference, and uh, there was a powerful man of God, and he was praying on the, for the people, and the palm, the people were getting zapped. But I noticed something. When, when people got zapped, they fall out, you know. When they get back, they go back to their seats, and the vast majority of the people, when they went back to their seats, I would say at least 80% of them, four out of five, when they got back to their seats, they ch start chatting, laughing. Ha ha! <laughs> taking out the chewing gum and it was like whoa they don't know how to work with this anointing you get get a touch go back praise God more keep that fire burning keep it going and even get it increased but the people are just too nonchalant too relaxed they don't know how to work with this they are not proactive. In other words, they go to conference, wait for a hopefully powerful man of God, lay hands on me. But if he once he does, then what? You see, it's a whole passive thing. A passive mentality. Bless me, bless me, lay your hands on me. Well, yeah, I want people to lay hands on me if they're powerful. But after that, I'm going to shakatata. I'm going to work with that thing. And keep it going. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Lord showed me another thing, you know, that sometimes disturbs me. People say, well, uh, pray for me. Uh, uh, I, I need this. 
I need a healing or uh, I need a husband, you know. And uh, so, you know, after the prayer is sent forth, no husband, the husband is not going to come the next day, most of the time. <laughs> so, but the whole point is, then what? And then what? It's like, just like, you would think there'd be more uh, uh, seeking of God. And it's just, well, I'm waiting. I'm just waiting. And, and God will show me right here. It's like, when you're in a so-called time of waiting, you've prayed for something, it didn't come uh, right, it hasn't come, it's like, don't just be stagnant, just keep praising God, the shaka, whoa, keep seeking God, keep praising God, increase your anointing of worship, by worshiping Him more and more, don't be stagnant, and so this is a thing people don't understand. Well, we prayed, so there's nothing more we can do, so um, we're just waiting. Well, I mean, we can't force God to move quicker, but we can continue to be proactive in pleasing God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So, you know, wow, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I, I, I'm seeing right now, you know, whether you get the blessing right away or not, it doesn't matter. Your attitude or relationship with God should not change. Amen. See, some people think, oh, if I get the blessing, oh, I'm going to keep praising God. I'm going to keep seeking God. Well, suppose it doesn't come right away. You're going to stop praising God? You're going to slack off? You see? Oh, la, 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 shata, kata. So, whether the blessing comes right away or not, it doesn't change my relationship with God. Ha, ba, ba. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In fact, you know, if it comes down to, you know, I'm waiting on God, you know, if it comes down to that, and you recognize the face, the countenance of a person who's waiting for God, you know, you could probably come into the congregation and s look at the people. See this one, clap, oh, praise God. Mm, good. You see this one. Oh, she's obviously waiting for God. <laughs> this one's waiting on God. <laughs> uh uh. Shakata basaya. Hallelujah. My relationship is not going to change. Even if I don't get the blessing right away. In fact, if you come to church and look at me, you wouldn't know if I was waiting or not. <laughs> wow. In fact, you might think he just got the blessing. Look at the way he's praising God. <laughs> And that's the way we should all be. People look at you praising God. Wow, he must have just got blessed. You know? No, he's waiting. He's been waiting for three years. Wow, three years? And he acted like that? <laughs> Shaka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 8. Praise the, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to be constantly provoking you to pleasure. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, the centurion. He says, you know, uh, his servant is sick, and uh, my servant, uh, he comes to Jesus, my servant is really sick. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And verse 8, Matthew 8, 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And what does verse 9 say? Uh, um, not in verse 9. Uh, I'm going to get quickly to Jesus' reaction. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. He marveled. It's like his mind was blown. Wow, wow. And he said to him, to them that followed, 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Notice he, his reaction. He turned to the crowd and said, I have not found such great faith in all of Israel. Why did he do that? He was so pleased. He wanted everybody to know that what the centurion did was a great thing. What well, Great words of faith. A great level of faith. And so, uh, later on, uh, uh, Jesus says in verse 13, And Jesus said to the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord. Now, what the centurion said, after he said, Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Uh, we go, go back to verse 9. He says, I am a man under authority, and have soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Now, what, what he was saying is that uh, I understand authority, how it works. And so when there is authority and it's exercised, everything under it must obey. So he was saying, your word, Jesus, has authority. All you have to do is speak it. Amen. And everything has to obey. Amen. So that was great faith. But today, uh, God began to show me something even in addition to that, that pleased the Lord. Jesus was pleased. This was great faith. He's saying all Jesus has to do is just speak. You don't even have to come to my house. You don't even have to come and touch my uh, servant's uh, hand or uh, uh, hold his hand or lay hands on him even. Just be where you are, far away, and just speak that word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise because there's a scripture, 147, Psalm 147, verse 15. He sends his commandment upon the earth and his word runs very swiftly. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, now, Jesus was marveling. What great faith. He's saying, all I have to do is speak the word. It's already done. I don't even have to do anything more after that. Just speak it. It's a word of authority. Boom. Everything must obey. But the Lord showed me something else here, too about the centurion's faith. He understood authority. He understood submission. What he was saying is, I have authority in my realm in the army. When I say something, all the people under me must submit. Uh, in other words, he, he was sh showing that he understood the laws of authority and submission. And the Lord began to show me something more about this centurion. Why God blessed him. According to your faith, so be it done unto you. As you have desired, that's the way it's going to be. You believe your servant shall be healed, he'll be healed. So with that, uh, we have that kind of faith. Whatever we believe in, it's done exactly the way you believe in it. You see? So now, God began to explain to me, the centurion understood the laws of authority because he uh, was a man uh, in an uh, army organization that functions on authority and submission. So you have authority, exercise it, everything else has to submit. And then if you're under someone who has authority over you, you have to submit. So there's authority and submission, and he was... Uh, um, as a way of life, that was his lifestyle. And God honored that because he understood, uh, the, the soldier understood authority and submission. He would submit if the authority was over him. He knows the rules of the game. And God, God was telling me why Jesus blessed him in addition to his words of faith is he understood the law of authority and submission. And, oh God. See, a lot of times we speak the word for something in our life and we want conditions to submit. So we want to, uh, the word we speak 
in the name of Jesus, you know, God command this body to be healed or whatever, you know, uh, we want everything to submit to that. And a lot of times we can speak by faith and keep speaking, I believe in the name of Jesus, and nothing happens. And Lord begin to explain to me, because we want uh, uh, the thor our words to have authority and the circumstances to submit, but we ourselves in our own life are not totally uh, uh, living according to authority and submission. Ooh. I mean, you look in the church. How many to the past is, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and they ain't going to do, do squat what the pastor says. <laughs> See, and, 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 you know, people think, well, I have this gift. It may be singing. It may be worshiping. Maybe waving flags, and so they think uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna gain God's uh, pleasure. I just do this more and more. But there still has to be a spirit of submission. Suppose we say not now. You know, it's not. Well, I got this gift. I'm gonna manifest it. You see. So the, the Lord was saying, Yeah, okay. You want your words to have authority and. Uh, all the circumstances to submit to that but you yourself must operate under the law of authority and submission Whoa! praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord wow praise the Lord it behooves us. Everything the Lord says, even a simple little thing, obey to the fullest. Submit to the fullest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's Okashakata. Praise the Lord. Oh my. Yes, the centurion said words that please the Lord. And we can say words that please the Lord. But it doesn't stop there. We have to act in a way that pleases the Lord. Especially operating within the confines of authority and submission. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I like this. The, the, God showed me some things about how to get more, how to please God more, and you can get more favor. See, now I'm not talking, again, I'm not talking about how to get God to love you more. No, it's how to get uh, more favor. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I mean, kabah, kabah, shaka. Hallelujah. I mean, you, if you have children, you love your children, and sometimes they say, Dad, you know, I want uh, five bucks for such and such. So you might give it to him. And then another time, he says, Dad, I want five bucks. And maybe you don't give it to him. So if you don't give it to him, does it mean you love him less? I still love him the same way, Amen. right? If I give him the five bucks, I love him. If I don't give him the five bucks, I still love him. So, so, but the whole point is, for the child's sake, uh, we know the Father loves me no matter what, but we just want to get more five bucks. <laughs> Praise God. So this is the thing. You know, it's the, to, to uh, uh, be wise and uh, be able to understand how to get God's pleasure, how to please Him more and more. Of course I know He loves me. If He doesn't give me the, the, the favor, well, I, I know He still loves me, that's all. But I'd rather have them love me and give me the favor than love me and not give me the favor. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So Lord showed me some things about the centurion. It's like he spoke. Speak. Hallelujah. And Lord been showing me you want to please the Lord more and more. Study his life, the life of Jesus. Study his nature. And then not just know it, but speak it all the time. It's like, wow, this is one area I got to move into more. A lot of things I know, but I want to be constantly speaking it. So give you an example. Okay, uh, um, the centurion spoke some words. They were, those were words of faith, words of wisdom. But, uh, and then the Lord heard it and rewarded him and blessed him. Now, let's go to Colossians 2, 3. 
Colossians 2, 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise and it says about Jesus, in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He is the source of wisdom and knowledge. Okay? So, uh, for you to say wise words, <laughs> Jesus is the source of that. He'll inspire you to say things that are wise uh, and full of faith. So, this is what I got. Okay. Now, you want more f favor from the Lord? Want to please Him more? Want to make Him more happy? Provoke His to have Him to have more more pleasure over you? Speak His nature. Amen. Okay, uh, let me break it down. Jesus, you're the source of all wisdom. Amen. You're the source of words of wisdom. Amen. Now, we speak. Uh oh, and you are looking for the manifestation of words of wisdom spoken. See, Jesus said, I have not found such great faith. I have not found means I looked. I have looked. I have looked. And he said, in all of Israel, that meant wherever Jesus went, in all of Israel, he was always looking. Is there anybody here has faith? Anybody here speaks wise words? See? And what about uh, um, about David in Psalm 89? The Lord says, I have found David. I have found David. Amen. See, So God is looking. So Jesus is the source of wisdom and words of wisdom. But he's looking for people speaking words of wisdom. Amen. And what happens when he finds people speaking words of wisdom? He will reward them. Because he's a rewarder of those that diligently speak him. So God, God began to show me, master this thing, uh, this understanding or this description about Jesus. He's the source of wisdom. He's looking for manifestation of wisdom. In other words, people speaking wisdom. And he is a rewarder of those manifesting wisdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you understand this, and it's like not just head knowledge, but write it, and this is one of the things I will speak every day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You will be motivating yourself. Remember the Bible says David encouraged himself. So you'll be motivating yourself to do something that provokes God's pleasure. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when I, a couple of weeks ago, I was, last month I was down in uh, uh, South Carolina, and uh, I spoke, I had the opportunity to uh, have breakfast and sit right next to Rick Joyner. I asked him, you know, because he had taught about, um, God been storing him up, to uh, be a friend of God. Don't just be a servant, but come to the next level and learn to be a friend of God. Uh, someone that God loves to have companionship with. You know, because he said, uh, you know, he was seeking God and then uh, asking God, oh God, what should I do? Uh, you want me to write a book? Uh -uh, I, got about, I got an idea about this book, I'll write. And God said, I can get anybody to write a book for me. <laughs> Labor is cheap. <laughs> but he said, to, and the Lord said, but I want friends. Amen. And so that stirred uh, Richard up into a, a new level of thinking, how, how to be a friend of God. Amen. And so I asked him, and he was learning some things about being a friend of God. So I asked him, uh, Rick, what's a, a key principle about becoming how to become a friend of God and this was want to know his answer how many people want to know his yeah. answer <laughs> say please with a cherry on top <laughs> well I'm obligated to tell you this was his answer talk to God it's that simple talk to God 
But what he meant was develop this relationship where you can talk to God and God will want to talk to you. And I remember when I was in college, there was this guy, uh, uh, he was in the army and he was 26. And he was on a GI Bill and come back to, uh, after he got done with the army, and come to, back to college. And most of us other uh, students, they were 17, 18, 19. But this guy was always going around, uh, uh, um, poke, you know, uh, uh, pricking our heads, so to speak. You know, poking our heads, so to speak. Just talking, to asking us questions. Trying to find out what, find out what we are thinking about, what our views are. And uh, for him, his whole... Um, a desire was to find people to have good conversation with. See? And if he found someone to have good conversation with, he'd always be looking for you because he loved to talk. <laughs> he was very curious. And, and so, like I said, I, I begin to understand that's it. You know, God, God is looking to have, find people with that he can have good conversation with. Amen. Oh, shut up. Hallelujah. And, and isn't that what friendship is about? And one time I was walking down the street and I heard this guy talking with another guy and this the, and he was talking about a girl and he said, yeah, and she's a lot of fun to be with. And, and it's like, whoa, well, that's what friendship is, where you can talk and have a good talk and laugh and joke around and have good conversation. And so it's like we want to be, if you want to be a friend of God, know how to talk to him. Right? You know, uh, you want to be a friend of God? Oh, God, I need a, uh, I need a raise. Oh, God, when are we going to get a new apartment? Oh, God. You know, what kind of conversation is that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But imagine, Jesus, wow, you're the source of all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Everything comes from you. Wow, shaka. And not only that, you're looking, you're searching the world, you're listening to conversations. You want to hear people speak the words of faith, wise words. Hallelujah. And when you find someone like that, you'll reward them. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. 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 Now, this is, <laughs> isn't that good conversation? <laughs> now, I just got something. Here's your assignment. <laughs> for next week <laughs> see if you could come up with three good conversations <laughs> to bring before the Lord <laughs> praise the Lord find out something about the Lord from the scripture and make a conversation out of it praise the Lord a good conversation <laughs> praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. I got it. Look, God said to Rich Joy, labor is cheap. I want friends. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, I want to learn to be a friend yeah. to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And how I can be a friend, it's right here in this book. I search this book. I can make a whole lot of good conversations. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! So we want to be able to talk good, but not just talk good, act good too. <laughs> So, hallelujah. So this gets, gets back to, uh, uh, we cannot emphasize enough the law of uh, authority and submission. Okay? We, uh, we have, you know, you know, sometimes we ha have an authority in one situation, but it goes to our head, and we think we have authority everywhere else, you know? I mean, can you imagine a person has authority uh, as a clerk in a grocery store? So uh, you go in then and you, you, you come and say, uh, wh wh where's the uh, evaporated milk? And he has the authority, third aisle, 
second shelf. <laughs> so that's the authority in the grocery store, you know. And the box comes in, and he tells the others, "Okay, uh, unload the paper towels. Now you unload the." Da -da. But if he's driving a car, it don't mean squat that he's got authority in the grocery store. The red light, you better stop at the red light. Well, the cop's going to give you a ticket. <laughs> so your authority, one place, doesn't carry over into another place. You see, but the whole thing is to learn, a, 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 a live by authority and submission. I don't have authority here. I have to submit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God showed me astounding thing. Let's go to First Kings twenty one. Okay, when, when God uh, sent Elijah to speak, wow, what a prophetic word, Whew. hard word of prophecy to Ahab. Okay, verse 21, uh, 1 Kings 21, verse 21. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat and the house of Baasha the son of Ahijah for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin and of Jezebel also spake the Lord saying the dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Woo! Wow. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat. And him that dieth in the field, shall the fowls of the air eat. So the descendants of Ahab, those that live in the city, the dogs going to eat them. And the descendants that live in the, the countryside, the, the, the birds are going to eat them. Wow! But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And he did very abominably uh, in following idols, according to all things he did, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass when Ahab heard those words, that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and laid in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbled, humbles himself before me? Because he humbles himself before me, for me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. And the Lord showed me this is an amazing scripture uh, about God's love, but also about what uh, ah Ahab was capable of doing and could have done more fully. By that I mean Ahab uh, heard the prophecy of Elijah, and this time he didn't fight it. He humbled himself and he fasted, and he walked softly. And what God showed me, and God saw this, God was pleased Amen. with this attitude of humility. Woo! Amen. Hallelujah. And because it pleased God, God said, I won't bring this evil upon him in his days, but in his children's days. And the Lord showed me what happened was Ahab had authority in the secular realm, in the worldly realm. But who had greater authority was Elijah, because Elijah operated in the spiritual realm. Okay? So Elijah had greater authority, and in this instant, Ahab submitted to Elijah's authority. Praise God. Praise God. And because of that, God honored what Ahab did. He humbled himself. So, though he had lots, most authority of any human being in that uh, country, yet in the spirit realm, Elijah was greater than him. 
And so Ahab humbled himself. It, it, the only pity is that Ahab, if he would, would have stayed this way, but obviously after the fast, uh, his wife started to, you know, direct him down the bad road again. But if he had stuck with this and kept this up, who knows? Everything, everything could have been changed. Yeah. But it just shows God is His mercy. Cool, God's mercy is so great, so great. And if we humble ourselves, it will please God. Can you imagine such a great uh, the, the the prophecy, such a horrible prophecy, and yet God began to soften it up because He saw Ahab humble himself. He, he began to change, not change it, but delay it. And if Ahab had gone further, maybe God would have canceled it all together. But it just shows that, you know, let, let us be wise and uh, learn to humble ourselves and operate within the confines of authority and submission. If I don't have the authority here, I have to obey those that have the authority. I want us to help me to submit, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has been just dealing with me and uh, teaching me about um, just favor. 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 Uh, I think I preached the other week uh, uh, John 1 16. A great scripture. If we understand it. And of his fullness. Have we received and grace for grace? I think if you get another translation, it's easier to understand. And what the disciples, and then verse 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. And grace is undeserved favor. And so the disciples said, of his fullness. Well, God's fullness is limitless. So of his fullness of his good things. Praise God. Uh, from his storehouse of good things, which is infinite, we have received grace upon grace, or blessing upon blessing, or favor upon favor. And so, because of his fullness, he's full of good things. You know, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went around doing good things, and healing all those who are oppressed of the devil. But he's full of good things. To, he's just capable of doing so many good things. And so uh, if we realize this and we can tap in and just receive favor upon favor upon favor, endless, endless, endless. Grace and truth came by Jesus, but the grace, the favor is endless. Amen. It's up to you how much you're going to receive. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so uh, God's been showing me, you know, uh, try to change your mindset. Develop the Christ mind. Praise yeah. God. It's, the, it's like purpose. When you read scripture, it's like, wow, another purpose. I want to find out things about Jesus. I want to write up things about Jesus. I want to see some uh, truths about his characteristics and not just know it. Then I want to speak it. Yeah. I want to speak it more and more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I got like, read, remember, right? Read the word, remember things, take notes about the Lord, His nature, recite, see, read, remember it, and then recite, speak it. And the next R I get is redundant. Redundant is something done over and over. Amen. You don't have to do it, but you keep doing it. <laughs> be redundant Keeps, you can speak it a hundred times a day Jesus you're the source of all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge wow you're looking you're looking for people speaking wisdom ah and when you find them you reward them hallelujah 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 you can say that a hundred times a day God would not get tired of hearing it Amen. praise God and for your benefit the more you say it you're going to you're going to be bringing more favor Papa, into your life. And the more you say it, it becomes part 
of your nature. It's part of your DNA. It's like you're always thinking this way. It's not like, you know, you memorize something for the test in the Bible class or something. No, this is something I just keep saying it till it becomes an etch in my DNA. And then it's part of me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Uh, he's the, uh, all wisdom comes from Jesus. Hallelujah. Not only all wisdom comes from Jesus, he's the source of it, but he's looking for man to, to, to get it and speak it. He's looking for man to display words of faith and words of wisdom. And not only that, uh, he's not only looking, uh, but what will he do when he finds it? He'll reward you. Wow. Kashaka. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a good what a good God we serve. Amen. What a good God we serve. Amen. And so the Lord say, you know, we don't have to be uh, reactive. Oh, you know, uh, I'm just waiting on the Lord to bless me. I'm not waiting. I'm doing things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm doing things that will stir him up to bless me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Who's still waiting for the Lord? <laughs> Lord, we want to be more proactive. And we thank you. You're showing us. It's within our power to stir you up. To ha move your hands that you will bring more favor upon us. That you will be more and more pleased with us. Amen. That you will send more blessings upon us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord.